For today's apparition, for the teaching our Lord wishes to give us, this is once again from St. Gertrude. We'll be spending uh, this first the rest of this week also with St. Gertrude before going into some apparitions that you'll be more familiar with. And this particular apparition uh, with Our Lady took place where once again St. Gertrude was sick. She couldn't take place, uh, participate in all of the prayers of the community in the monastery church as she wanted to. And this was the, the night, it was Christmas Eve. And so she was the, the night before Christmas, or the, or the night leading into Christmas, if you will. And she was, she was, uh, she was taken up in an ecstasy, in a vision where she saw our Lord in heaven. And as she saw him, he gave her a vision of how different souls came towards him. So this is part of that vision. Uh, there was a light coming from our Lord's sacred heart which showed souls the way in which they should come to him. As each soul approached God, St. Gertrude perceived that those who had recommended themselves humbly to the prayers of others were led by the hand by persons who surrounded them, and thus they went direct to God in the splendor of this light which came forth from his heart. And think especially of those who asked Our Lady for her prayers, being guided by the hand by her. Whereas those who had confided merely in their own efforts and prayers wandered from this path, but arrived at last at the termination by a light which came to them from God. And then St. Gertrude asks about how her sisters will be happy in heaven. She, she's always thinking about heaven, so she asks, about that, and I'm not going to read, it would be too long, but the Lord uh, gives her this vision of showing how each of the sisters, according to their particular desires, had, had their, all their desires fulfilled in heaven with great joy uh, in a most. So each, each sister found in our Lord, in a most pure and holy manner, the accomplishment of her individual desires. And then St. Gertrude asks, she, she casts herself at our Lord's feet in this vision and says, Most loving Lord, what should my dispositions be? And what devotion can I offer to thy most blessed mother at this divine birth? Since my, my weakness uh, prevents me from being able to recite the office. So she says, what, how, can I, how can I honor, how can I show my love towards Our Lady on this holy night? leading into Christmas. And then uh, our Lord, moved by compassion for her weakness, uh, her imperfection, gathers together, so she's Jesus gathering together all everything that St. Gertrude had said for the glory of God or for the good of souls during Advent and offered this to his mother. So everything good that St. Gertrude had said during Advent, whether good she'd said to God, any prayer, any act of love or faith or adoration said to God, or anything she'd said to other people to, for the good of their souls, uh, our Jesus gathers all of this up and offers it to his mother as a gift. And, and to this, he adds all the fruits which her words uh, might produce even to the end of time. So the ripple effect. Maybe she said a good word to some sister, and because of that, that sister uh, prays more, and that sister's prayers help someone else, and that person helps someone else, and so forth. So he offers also this beautiful ripple effect of all the good, any good that she had done. And then St. Gertrude uh, replies to this, so this is this offering, this, this bouquet, if you will, given by Jesus to his mother uh, on St. Gertrude's behalf. And St. Gertrude says, um, What fruit can there be in these words of mine, whatever words I spoke during Advent, uttered by one so vile? So she says, Look, I'm, I'm so very imperfect. I even have my sins. How can this be pleasing 
to the Most Holy Virgin. And the Lord responds saying, what does it matter? What kind of wood is used to stir up perfumes and vases of incense? Since when they are stirred up, they always emit the same odor. And as a, a priest, because you're often stirring incense in the Mass, you realize that, that the spoon is, gets quite dirty and so forth, uh, that, that stirs up the charcoal and the incense. And so the Lord's saying, look, what does it matter what type of spoon? It doesn't really matter if the spoon is, is messy or dirty or, or has a dent in it or whatever. It, the, the incense winds up smelling just as nice that comes out. And so also, even if you're imperfect or sinful and so forth, nonetheless, any good word you say, any word of love or prayer uh, towards me or helping good word towards other people, still is very beautiful and is something I rejoice in and it's a beautiful gift to my mother that you've helped people to love me. So the, the lesson of that for us as we prepare for consecration is that I see over and over again as a priest one of the pitfalls that even devout good Catholics can fall into is a hidden trap of pride where we become a little bit too much or, or a lot too much focused on my imperfections, my sinfulness, as opposed to having the forgetfulness of a little child who just is, is marveling at the good things around them. And that's the type of attitude we should have in terms of offering with, with joy, with peace, our prayers, our love, our adoration towards God. And, and also, very importantly, he says in here, any good words we say towards other people, so words that specifically help them love our Lord or Our Lady, or just words of kindness or charity, there, when she, she's asking again on Christmas night, how can I make Our Lady happy, or how, what, what gift can I offer Our Lady? And he says, all of the good words that you've said, either to me directly or to other souls during Advent. So let's think of that this day and realize that any, any good words we say, and that also includes words quietly in your heart when you're just praying to God quietly, but, but also any good words you say to anyone around you is a beautiful way of showing your love for Our Lady. And with that forgetfulness where however imperfect or weak or sinful you are, or maybe even you used your tongue in a way that was not good by something you just said, well, regardless, the next moment you can use it for something good and beautiful and holy. And so may Our Lady guide you in that. And let's pray now the Memorare, asking for confiding with full confidence in Our Lady's prayers and motherly help. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. <laughs>